fighting has always been about more than just who has the bigger sword. After all, the poorest tactics never consider their own defense. Armor has evolved through the centuries, from basic coverings to protect an army's infantry, to astounding feats of design made to win wars of combat and politics. It's insane to think that a set of armor could have that much impact, but after you watch this video, you'll see why. Here are some examples of ridiculously badass armor and why it exists. Salad in the shape of a lion's head. Now this incredible piece of metalwork is the earliest surviving example of Renaissance armor all antica, or armor in the antique style if you don't speak French. It's called the salad in the shape of a lion's head. Made around 1475, the lion head itself is a golden gilt copper, with the eyes made of glass to look more lifelike. The salad itself is a shell which fits onto a steel helmet underneath. It represents the head of the Nemean lion, the famous feline slain and worn by the demigod Hercules in Greek mythology. Hercules was often used in Renaissance art as a symbol of courage, strength, and perseverance. So walking out on the street back in the day with this strapped to your head was what I believe the kids call a huge flex. Foot Combat Helm of Sir Giles Capel the foot combat helm of Sir Giles Capel is arguably the finest of its kind to survive from the period around 1510. As part of the retinue of Henry VIII, Capel was a famous challenger of opponents during a tournament summit between England and France in 1520. The design allowed him to compete in multiple events such as sword fighting and jousting with a clear field of vision while his eyes were protected. The slight ridge down the center was a purposeful part of the design to help deflect opponents' head blows as well as looking cool as hell and arguably influencing modern fencing masks designs. Chaffrons. Cavalry back in the 15th century were essential to hundreds of battle plans, but no matter how well protected your riders were, their charge would have been pointless if they were riding into battle on the back of a giant target. Alongside their own full coats of armor called barding, horses also sported chiffrons, which provided protection for their head. More intricate designs like this one made for Duke Nicholas the Black Rodzewell around 1515 included meticulously crafted eye guards so that the horse could still see while its eyes were being protected. Others from the French Renaissance period were designed as elaborate parade armor to go with their rider's royal style. This incredible metalwork is a chaffron of Henry II of France, whose horse was made to look like a fierce dragon in a heroic style making specific references to heroes of literature and legend. Turban Helmet of the Ottoman Turks Originating from the age of the Ottoman Empire, Ottoman helmets, or sometimes known turban helmets, were designed for warriors who wore a religious head covering. European helmet designs fit as snugly as possible to prevent the head from banging against the metal sides when hit but these helmets were designed around the 14th century to better accommodate the Ottoman soldiers' religious requirements while providing protection during battle. The distinctive conical shape was usually gilded with Quranic inscriptions in a rich arabesque style to provide God's protective power to the wearer. That was a smart move considering that the Ottoman Empire fought in several holy wars. Parade Armor of Henry II of France Armor wasn't just used in battle, but also in the war of politics and state. Henry II of France, who ruled in the mid-15th century, held many wonderful sets of parade armor, but perhaps none more so than that which was designed by Etienne de Leon. The master engraver designed every inch of the silver and steel carapace with intricate gold details, each one telling a story of the wearer. Figures on the breastplate and back reflect Henry II's many military achievements, and many others are adornments of powerful arabesque art. This prestigious commission probably involved many of the country's finest master goldsmiths, but it was never designed for any kind of joust or battle. It'd be like trying to take a Lamborghini off-road. Possible, but a very expensive and bad idea. Elephant Armor Horses weren't the only animals given armor for battle, Elephants were used for warfare in India for almost a thousand years. 16th century war elephants were given giant plate and chainmail coverings to protect vital body parts from their attackers. In total, it's estimated these armor sets were comprised of around 8,439 plates, weighing in at a huge 159 kilograms. But that wasn't all. These OG tanks were also given long, wavy blades which were affixed onto their tusks, of which only four known pairs survive today, including this one. When they charged into battle, they could either stomp their enemy to death or shred them to ribbons. 
As the elephants were ridden into the lines of their opponents, many of those who had never seen an elephant before assumed these beasts naturally had knives protruding from their face. Now there's a scare tactic for the ages. Bergenet of Guidobaldo II. Like a lot of outfits, sometimes it doesn't matter what you wear, but who you wear. The infamous Filippo Negroli was a Renaissance master of ceremonial armor, producing some of the world's most famous bergenets from the 15th century. Bergenets are light steel caps used in the late medieval infantry. Some included a fitted neck piece so the head could be turned without exposing the neck. Jaw-dropping examples of these include the Griffin Bergenet, designed to look like the intricate head of a griffin with an attachable visor. There's also the Bergenet of Guidobaldo II, Duke of Urbino, which has a detailed wolf snarling about the wearer's face while a dragon perches on top and wings on either side. Negroli and his family provided these exquisite works to patrons such as Emperor Charles V and other members of the 15th century French court and created a legacy building art form which still impresses to this day. Ferdinand II of Austria. What do you get for the man who has everything? Well, if you're buying a gift for the Emperor of the Holy Roman Order, you'd better be thinking of more than socks. This absolutely insane all antica armor and matching chaffron masterpiece was created by Lucio Piccinino in the 15th century. It was given as a gift for the Duke of Parma and Piacenza, Alessandro Fernese. Knowing the emperor was an avid collector of art, this masterpiece helped the duke curry the emperor's favor as he used the armor in parades and ceremonies of great political importance. Each section has been designed to show a famous, awe-inspiring scene from history, such as gilding on the shield representing Artemis of Ephesus and Alexander the Great receiving the keys of Babylon. Gilded with the finest gold, this silver-plated set is lined with leather and red velvet. No expense spared here. The Duke of Parma certainly earned himself a spot on the Emperor's Christmas card list. Pranker Helm European helmets of the 12th century had one major flaw. Ironically, they didn't really protect the head very well. But by the mid-13th century, that all changed. The Pranker Helm is an example of a highly improved 13th century pot helm. Made from reinforced pre-strapped metal plate, it compromised the wearer's field of vision to two narrow slits in favor of full facial defense. Unfortunately, the sheer weight of all this extra metal meant the helmets weren't suitable for battle and so were used almost exclusively for tournaments. During these bouts, knights would joust each other and claim victory by hitting large decorations off the head of their opponents. These fancy fascinators were representative of the wearer's family crest to make it easy for the king or presiding noble to identify who was fighting who from afar. In this case, we see the pranker family's audacious bullhorns made from bare iron. It's like they say, if you mess with the bull, you'll get the horns. Gauntlets of Maximilian I. Back in the day, armor could even be used as propaganda under the right circumstances. Take these gauntlets that look like they've been plucked out of Lord of the Rings, for example. They belong to Emperor Maximilian I of the Holy Roman Empire, one of the most powerful rulers of Europe in the 15th century. They send tingles down your spine just looking at them. And that's exactly why they were made. Despite the huge amounts of fancy armor Maximilian I owned, he wasn't exactly known for his military prowess. But that didn't matter as the public spectacles he created suggesting he was a warrior emperor through his armored appearances made him a legend. The aggressively stylish nature of these kinds of garments would have made them almost unusable, but they did the job of making him look like a powerful man who knew what he was doing. Remember kids, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. The Brocus Helm. Until the 14th century, helmets seen out on the battlefields were the same as those used in jousts. The design was fine for vision, but savage blows to the head could be fatal as they weren't designed to withstand big impacts. So changes were made to the traditional designs and specific jousting helmets were crafted such as the Brocus Helm. This was made for the German form of the joust of peace known as the Gestek. It's a frog mouth helm that has a protruded lower edge of the vision slit, which juts forward and upward to prevent a glance slipping into the jouster's eyes. At the time, this was cutting edge jousting fashion, except it also weighed over 10 kilograms, which would have the equivalent effect of riding into a fight with three large bricks on your head. On your head, be it quite literally. Horned Helmet of Henry VIII. Henry VIII was famous for beheading his wives, so what kind of gift do you get a man who's clearly missing good heads in his life? Obviously, this bizarre horned helmet. 
It was gifted to Henry VIII by none other than Emperor Maximilian I, the very same man who conquered courts and politics with his choice of armor. The horn helmet was designed by Conrad Susenhofer, once one of Europe's most prominent armorers. The level of detail ascribed to the helmet is staggering, from the lines under the eyes of the silver grill panels to the pockets of stubble on the jaw. Researchers have previously thought that it was designed to depict a fool. You can kind of see why with the comically large nose, spiral horns, and glasses. Makes you wonder if this was actually a two-faced gift. Jaguar Warriors Embossing elaborate images of animals from myth and legend onto armor wasn't as badass as Mayan military captains who went to war wearing the actual skins of those fearsome animals. It's often assumed that the legendary Aztec jaguar warriors wore the pelts of then abundant jaguars into battle, but pictograms from the historic Codex Mendoza, a ledger of details created about the Aztec society in 1541, indicate that Aztec jaguar warriors preferred quilted armor lined with colorful bird feathers. This allowed them to wear a multitude of colors and patterns on the battlefield linked to higher ranking and more skilled warriors. A Spanish friar, Diego de Landa, at the time of the Spanish invasion of Maya around the 16th century, noted that lords and captains went to war clothed with skins of tigers, lions, jaguars, and pumas. Regardless of the pelts themselves, it was believed that dressing in the pelts in colorful costumes would give them the animal strength during battle, which explains the Aztec and Mayan ferocious battle strategies and historic fearlessness of warfare. Who needs plate armor when you have kahunas that size? Samurai Armor In feudal Japan, the life of a samurai meant being constantly on the move. Heavy armor was a burden, so the ingenious design of the tatami gosoku became a standard amongst all classes of samurai. In English, tatami gosoku translates to to fold armor, and the wearer was easily able to remove and transport it in a small wooden box when necessary. This armor was often paired with a kabuto helmet, which played a symbolic role as well. This 17th century shell-shaped harikaki kabuto was made with paper mache and lacquer affixed to an iron base. Despite perhaps being a little useless in battle, it clearly shows the status of its wearer and the appropriate respect it should be shown. Facial armor components called mingu or minyori were sometimes fixed to the kabuto, giving wearers a terrifying appearance to the enemy, as well as acting as a strap to keep the kabuto in place, efficient and scary. No wonder the samurai ruled Japan for almost 700 years. Polish Winged Hussar Armor the armor of the Polish winged hussar is one of the most badass examples of armor design in history. These angels of death would ride into battle with giant wooden frames fixed to the lower portions of their armor, which carried either ostrich, swan, eagle, or goose feathers. To the enemy, they resembled wings and probably looked like the armies of heaven had opened as thousands of these elite cavalrymen rushed towards them. Theories about their inclusion in the armor vary but the most commonly accepted is that they made a tremendous amount of clattering noise, scaring the opposition's horses, and making their cavalry numbers sound much bigger than they were. It's an ingenious battle tactic for its time, and they certainly weren't winging it. Which of these did you think was the most impressive? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.